Okay, my next guest you all know is a fine comedian, David Brenner. David Brenner has been a frequent guest on The Tonight Show. Then he went away for a while and did his own late night show. But now, like a prodigal son, he's returned. <laughs> <laughs> and he's going to be appearing at Slippery, uh, Slippery, uh, Slippery Rock University <laughs> in Slippery Rock, Pennsylvania. And then at the Sunrise Theater in Sunrise, Florida on the 27th of yeah. September. Would you welcome Mr. David Brenner? Thank you. Well, I can't tell you how happy I am to be back on the show. At, uh, when I found out about it, it was such a thrill. And, but then something weird started to happen. Here's, you know, well, you know how when you're young, you disillusion yourself about so many things? One of which is you really believe, and I think we're all this way, that when you see something happening to an old person, it's never, ever going to someday happen to you. You know what I'm talking about? Like, remember when your grandmother would come out on the porch and, and wave goodbye, then she'd stop waving and the bottom of her arm would keep flapping for like 10 minutes? <laughs> I once walked behind my grandmother, I got a slap on the forehead. I thought someone hit me with a warm fish. <laughs> so anyway, so when I got the call, I usually, or almost always, get up in the morning bright-eyed, I literally leap out of bed, I jump in the shower, I get dressed real fast, I shoot out into the streets, I'm moving through the neighborhood, Mr. Energy. After I got the call that I'm going to do The Tonight Show, I start getting nostalgic. I start thinking about the first time I was ever on television, which was The Tonight Show. And all of a sudden, I realized it was 16 years ago. And that's all I could think about for days. 16 years. And I was getting, like, old. I get up in the morning, like, uh-oh. <laughs> you know, it's starting to happen. I'm even walking like my grandmother. She always looked like she was sneaking up on someone. <laughs> so, well, and, and by the way, don't think I'm making fun of senior citizens. As a matter of fact, I'm, I'm sponsoring a bill I'm trying to get in Congress. I'll tell you about it, because I think it's important, not because I thought of it. I believe, in my opinion, that our automobile manufacturers do not take senior citizens in mind when they make new cars. Now, you know, a certain percentage of new cars are purchased by senior citizens, and they know the exact percentage because you put your age on the application. So I believe that our automobile manufacturers ought to produce a certain percentage of brand new automobiles, keeping the senior citizen in mind, and make these cars where the windshield is underneath the steering wheel. <laughs> There's no reason. I got that idea in Miami. Did you ever stand on Collins Avenue, you see these cars whipping by, little tufts of white hair in them? Looks like rabbits are driving. <laughs> so anyway, so I started feeling old, and, and I got on my manager's nerves. I was acting old, so, and he's young, too. And he said, come on, David, don't be so stupid. You don't get old overnight. You don't go to bed young and wake up the next morning old. It's a whole process. It takes weeks. <laughs> and then he started bugging me. Go to a doctor. Get examined. Go to a doctor. And not because he likes to bug me. He knows me. You have to bug me to go to a doctor. I hate going to doctors. I hate being examined. I hate doctors. I hate especially when they put on that rubber glove. Because uh, you realize in a few seconds, you're going to know exactly how a puppet feels. You know, the next time, the next time you go to a doctor and he does that to you, you're going to think about me and laugh. And he's not going to know why the hell you're laughing. Or worse than that, if you're a doctor and you do that to a patient and you laugh, so anyway, I went to the doctor, and I'm glad I did. He examined me, and he told me I'm still young, I'm still healthy, everything's fine. It was all in my head. It was mental. It was so stupid. And you know something? I don't think that very, 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 very fat people should be allowed to ride on mopeds. I'm serious, and I'll tell you why. Because it's frightening. You don't see the moped. You hear this motor, and you see this person whipping around the street. Now, I'm not just talking about people who are overweight. I'm talking about the special one in a million heavy-duty number. I wouldn't make fun of fat people. Besides, you're not supposed to call people fat. There's an organization now. They want to be called, um, pudgy. Well, I'm talking industrial pudge. You know what I'm talking about? You know what I mean? Like, like the kind of person buys high heels, wears them once in their slippers. Biggies, you know what I'm saying? Big O's. Like, they get off your bicycle and the seat's missing. 
and you don't want it back, you know? <laughs> right? They step out of a cab at the airport and all the automatic doors in the whole city fly open. Biggies, you know, biggies. Oh, there was a woman on a plane with me a few weeks ago. I never saw anything that big that wasn't pulling a wagon. <laughs> Really, she had to be born on a plane. There's no way they got her in any of those doors. And a flight attendant says to me, you're sitting next to her. I said, everyone on a plane is sitting next to her. I never saw anything like this. Hey. They, had to, they had to put all these extra belts around her. They put belts around the airplane. We kept flying in a circle until someone finally pushed her in the middle of the plane. Just... Well, I didn't say anything. It's not nice. And besides, you don't have to say anything, right? Everyone knows when it's time to lose weight. You know when it's time to lose weight. No one has to tell you, right? You know. Like, if you get on an up escalator and it starts going down... <laughs> or if you put on a pair of corduroys and all the ridges disappear... Right? Or when you're walking, you hear that swishing sound a corduroy makes, and you're naked. Come on, trim it down. Thank you. Aha. Uh -huh. well, welcome back. Thanks. It's great being back. Am I really getting hung up on time here tonight? We're running long, aren't we? Yeah, I've noticed that. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, good to have you back here. It's fabulous to be back here. Can I stay even after the show closes? Sure, you can I'll stay here. I'll just sit here. Do a few more minutes or No, something? just alone. I just want to sit here again. <laughs> it's great. We're coming right back. <laughs> 